In the last video, we talked about how to actually do decimal multiplication with the stack method. And the, the suggestion was, let's say we, we start with this right here, and we're doing 123 times 0.45. My suggestion was that you think of it as if there is no decimal point. Just do 123 times 45, get a number, right? And then take the result, which is 5,535, and move the decimal point from here twice to the left. And the reasoning was you can just count the number of digits before the decimal point. And that will tell you how far to move the decimal point. So if there's two digits here, we move the final answer's decimal point two places to the left. If there were three digits, we would move it three places to the left. And um, that's, that's a pretty good rule. I guess I'm phrasing it okay. I want to talk about why, why it might make sense. And uh, I should say the last thing is that when you're counting the digits here, you don't want to count zeros at the end. right? That wouldn't count as another, another digit to move the decimal places. Only digits that are significant. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about what that might mean. So, um, so let's talk about why we actually move the decimal points. And that's the focus of this video is a little bit of reasoning behind the algorithm so you're not stuck trying to memorize it. Let's look at 12 times 10. What is 12 times 10? Well, that's 120, right? And if we're not sure about this, we can, we can write it out in the stack method. 0 times 2 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. We need a placeholder in here. 1 times 2 is 2. That's really 10 times 2 is 20. And 1 times 1 is 1. And that's 1 10 times another 10, which is 100. And that gives us 120. Now, what if we did... What if we did 12 times 1? So instead of 10, it's just times 1. And that's just 12, right? If we don't agree, we can write it out. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1. And we're done. Okay. Well, what about 12 times 0.1? Well, we can look at a pattern here to make a conclusion about this. I'm going to move this down. I'm going to add another step in this above right here. What if I did 12 times 100? What would that be? Well, let's write it out over here with the stack method and figure this out. So I'm going to use this pattern to make a conclusion about what this has to be. What if I took 100 times 12? Okay, well, 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2. Put a 0 here. 1 times 0 is 0, 1 times 0 is another 0, and 1 times 1 is 1, and that gives us 1,200. So now look at this pattern. Notice that as we work our way down this, this is called a string, and a string is just a bunch of equations that connect in some way, right? We're multiplying these numbers and getting an answer or a product, and what's happening each time? Well, it looks like, at first glance, that the number of zeros is going down, right? From 2 to 1 to nothing. Um, but that, that doesn't really fully help us. I think what we should look at here is what's happening to the decimal point. Well, here are 1,200. The decimal point's right there. And then here in the next problem, where did the decimal point go? Well, it moved once over to the left from 1,200 to 120. It's right there. And we can even put the zeros in to see what's happening. Right? This is 120.0. And here we can think of 12 as what? Well, as 12.00. So it looks like every time we multiply down from 100 to 10 to 1, our decimal point moves over once to the left each time it gets smaller and smaller. So then it makes sense here that 12 times 0.1 should be what? Well, if I keep my zeros in and I'm moving that decimal point over and over, we should get this, 1.200. Interesting. So the change here from, from, this, from this equation, let's, let's highlight this, to this is what? Well, I multiply 12 by 1 here, and then I multiply 12 by, by 0 0.1 here, and our answer changed from 12 to 1.2. Why is this happening? Well, this number right here, 0.1, what does that mean? Well, that means one-tenth. 
and this number just means 1. So we're taking a number 12, multiplying it out once. Here we're taking that 12 and we're finding 1 tenth of it. So this number, every time we move the decimal point over, right? This number over here, 0.1, is 10 times smaller than 1. Right? If we had a picture of a, of a box and that's one unit, when we go to point 1, well, we take 1 tenth of that, maybe a little square right there. This is 1 tenth. So our number, 12, when we multiply it by 1, well, it's going to be 10 times bigger than when we multiply it by point 1. So this answer should be 1.2. And this always happens. The idea being that every time you take a product, and you move more, your decimal point to the left once, you're making your product 10 times smaller. So what does that mean? Well, in terms of an algorithm, if we're looking at, let's say, 54 times 1 versus 54 times 0.1, or 54 times 0 0.01, or 54 times 0 0.001, we can follow a pattern. So 54 times 1, 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 5 is 54. Now this number here is 10 times smaller. So the product, we can think of it as if it were just 54 times 1, get 54, and then make our product 10 times smaller. Right? There's one significant digit here, so we move the decimal point once over to the left, and we get 5.4. Here with 54 times 0.01, we could think of that as 54 times 1. We can forget the decimal point for a moment, and we should get 54. But then, really, this number is not just 10 times smaller. What is it? Well, this 0 0.01 represents 1 over 100. So we went from 1 to 1 tenth to 1 over 100. So this is 100 times smaller. And when something's 100 times smaller, the decimal point moves twice from here to here. So this answer is 0.54, and again, we have two significant digits here. So we move the decimal point twice to the left. In this case, with significant, I just mean uh, we don't have to worry about an endless string of zeros over here that doesn't change the value. We're only worried about digits that change the value of the number. This zero is important over here because it makes our number 10 times smaller than if it were just 0.1. But these don't matter. So if I say significant digits. Just count the ones that make your number uh, value change. These zeros, I can add them on, I won't change anything, so really it doesn't change the bottom number. Here though, look at this last one, we have two zeros here, which means, well, what is 0 0.001? That's equal to 1 over 1,000. It's a really small number. In fact, it's even 10 times smaller than 100, 1 one hundredth. So I can think of this as just 1 times 54, Okay, I get 54. But then, what do I do with my decimal point? Well, I move it twice to the left. Excuse me, three times to the left, what am I saying? Because here, 1 to point zero zero 0.001, the decimal point had to move from here. That would be 1. 1 to three places to here. So really, when we, in this answer, we want the decimal point three places to the left. And the answer is point zero five four. And we can extend this if I had anything to deal with. Like if I had something that looks nasty like 63 times 0 0.00002, I could think of this, well first let's solve 63 times 2. Of course this will give you a much larger result. It will give you, well, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 6 is 12. So what does that mean about this? Well, to get from 2 to point zero 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 two, I would have to move that decimal point from here, right, that's, uh, that's just 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times to the left. And as you know, dividing by 10 moves from decimal point once to the left, right? If I take 2 and divide it by 10, what do I get? I get, I get 0 0.2, right? And if I divide that by 10, I get 0 0.02. That's a, if you want to go back and look at that, every time we divide by 10, I have videos that talk about this, we move our decimal point to the left. Here, it's the same thing, but we did it one, two, three, four, five times. So this answer right here is it's going to be 126, but there are one, two, three, four, five significant digits here. Move that decimal point five times to the left. So move it from here over five times. One, two, three, four, five. And that means there should be two zeros in here. 
one, two, three, four, five places, and that's our answer. In the next video, we'll finish up by looking at some decimal by decimal multiplication. Thanks.